Welcome back to France, everyone. It is time for us to do our very first travel guide, and we're doing it on Aix and Provence. If you think you know France, if you've been to Paris and you've seen the Eiffel Tower, tasted a croissant or two, you think you figured it out, trust me, you haven't. You have not been to Aix. Let's put it this way, folks. If Paris is the beautiful, moody mistress who sometimes smokes in bed and gets a little rough, <laughs> Aix and Provence is the quieter, sunny cousin who sits back, relaxes, and doesn't give a damn about your troubles. So this is the South people, the South of France. Life moves a little slower here, and everything tastes better because of it. You don't come to X to be impressed. You come to live. L-I-V-I-N, like Matthew McConaughey would say. <laughs> you come to enjoy art. You come to eat. And this is France after all. And you come to drink as well. <laughs> but now that you've had your amuse-bouche on X, let's do a quick life update on what it's like to be expats in France, shall we? Past week has been filled with calling the gas company, having the fire the fire trucks called out. How do we say that in French again? The- Campion de Pompadour? I don't know. That, that one's <laughs> Our totally French is, yeah. it's coming along. <laughs> uh, we've been homesick. We have gone on dates, quotes, you know, with other couples. Uh, we've been, we joined a CrossFit gym and we're starting to make friends there. And we actually have a date with our neighbor who has kids as well. We're planting seeds is what Scott is saying. But I feel like we kind of skirted over some big stuff. You called a gas company and we called a fire truck. Pourquoi? Why would we do such a thing? We'll get into that. But as just a general idea, I would say that our feelings right now in France are we've kind of hit the the lull. You know, the honeymoon period's over. Things are real. And the sadness of missing friends, of having the comfort of being able to speak the language is, is setting in pretty hard. Yeah, I would say so. I, I would even dare to say I didn't have a honeymoon phase because <laughs> there were so many decisions we had to make yeah. in the very beginning. Okay, we have to find a place to live. That was a huge stressor. Um, it wasn't, it's not like, you know, vacationing on the Riviera. You are living here. It is totally different. Assimilating in different ways, going grocery shopping instead of out to dinner, um, trying to make friends instead of just saying this is temporary. There is a, a different feeling of this permanence. I wrote something down today as a, I wrote, I was basically, it's as a very confident person. I feel so unconfident in my day-to-day life. This is the first time where I actually feel like scared sometimes to like do stuff. Like right now I need to get a haircut and I'm scared to go call someone because I don't speak the language. I'm just embarrassed. And this is, I mean, we always tell people you need to push yourself, get outside your comfort zone. I am so uncomfortable right now. Like it's just not even funny. And it's, it's taken this time because, I mean, maybe it was a honeymoon period completely, you know, as we transitioned, but now we have to do real stuff. We have to get a, a vet appointment for Lucy. You have like doctor's appointments for Scotland, like all these serious things that we have to do and you can't just skip over them because, hey, I don't speak the language. You have to go confront your fears one-on-one. Yeah, and I think the the stakes are higher, right? Because it's not just like you're on vacation ordering at a restaurant, someone messes up your order. Exactly. It's like, I'm going to a doctor for my child trying to make sure that she's hitting her milestones and being able to ask the appropriate questions and understand what this doctor is saying. So there's a the stakes are higher for sure. But I, I feel the same way as you. I feel uh, scared. I feel very empathetic to immigrants uh, who are trying to speak. Like, think think about it. Back in the States, if we heard someone trying to speak English, it's really hard. And I feel like oftentimes people are judged if they have an accent or something like that. We got to be softer on these people. They're trying. Trust me. <laughs> and I, I, I have to take the mindset of this is a process. This is a journey. This is what we chose. And this is all part of it. Yeah. And we kept saying, oh, we want a challenge. We want all that. But then when you're actually in the challenge, it's really tough. Yeah. I could go for a Whole Foods right now. Right. Or like a a whole conversation in English. Yeah. So (laughs) let's, so now we've got to put that, let's talk about why we called the gas company. Basically, we've had a, we've had this lovely apartment and the day we got in, we had this smell and we thought, what is this? And initially our, our real estate agent said, that, oh, it's there's a gas station down the street, which there is, and we thought that was the problem, but it was coming from inside the apartment, and it turns out it's from the heating system, and it's like kerosene fuel smell that is just kind of seeping up, and so the past two, three weeks? Three weeks? Uh, it, almost a month, almost actually. A month. It's just been this pain where we've had to 
opened the windows. We had to call the maintenance people. They, they taped our one of our doors shut to help keep the smell out. I actually went and took some tools to remove some metal bars from some windows that were in the stairwell so I could open these windows to get more ventilation. It's been a, it's been a problem. It's been a French problem. Yeah, because when we have spoken up about it, it's like, oh, well, it's the south of France. Things take longer. Just be patient. And I'm like, listen, I've got a two-year-old. I'm getting headaches and migraines from this smell. I can't be patient. Like, this seems dangerous. So we need some answers. And I think we're getting them. Yes, yeah, so you've, you've emailed, called, and just put as much pressure as possible. You messaged the Marie, which is like the, the, the town hall, basically. Yes. And fortunately, the you know, the apartment management company is responding a little bit slower, but, and we don't have a clear answer. We don't know if the system's working or not. They say they're taking it out. And that's just part of the headaches that we have is you get an answer, but it's just not a hundred percent clear because of the language. It's like you hear certain stories back and forth, but the smell has been gone for the past three days, basically. So I think they did something. Yes, I think something has been done and I think something else will be done soon. But basically, I want to thank our Romaru community on Instagram because I was at a loss. I, I didn't know what to do. I thought, oh my gosh, we have to move for a third time because that's ultimately if this smell didn't go away, we knew we had to to move out of the apartment. So I went to the interwebs and I said, hey, do you guys know what to do? Like, I'm new to France. Do you have any tips? And luckily, we do have some awesome followers that live in France. And they gave me the tips of call the gas company, call the fire trucks, make sure there's no uh, like toxic safety hazard. And then if the apartment building doesn't do anything, you go to the town hall. And then eventually the next step would be to go to the the newspaper, which I didn't have to do. Um, but I let them know every step of the way, like, hey, you know, I'm really trying here. If I don't hear an answer by X, Y, Z date, I'm going to need to call this person. Eventually, we did need to call the gas company, the fire truck, make sure there wasn't a fire hazard. Um, and And some steps were taken. So I'm hopeful about the apartment. Yeah. I mean, we threatened to move out. We said, we basically said, hey, if we, this isn't fixed in the next few days, we're going to exercise our 30 day notice and move out. But they listened to us. So, problem hopefully solved. <laughs> problem on its way to being solved. <laughs> yeah. All right. Should we talk about X? Yeah. Let's get into X because this is a special place, guy. So, first thing, if you look up X, it's spelled A I X, it's pronounced like the letter X. It was founded by the Romans who, let's face it, knew what they were doing because. It came to setting up shop in such a gorgeous place. They called it, you want to help me out here? <laughs> Aqua Sextia. <laughs> this, is, this is the Roman and Latin word. Because of the natural hot springs that bubble up from the ground in the area. This was basically a spa town Ooh. built for indulgence, relaxation, and letting the weight of the world slip off your shoulders. Such a Roman thing to do. Yes, my ancestors knew what was up. <laughs> now, fast forward a couple of millennia and the charm hasn't worn off. Sure, the Romans are long gone, but the slow, indulgent way of living, that's still there. X is a place where you can lose a few hours just sipping wine, eating food that's been prepared with care, and watching the world go by without a single ounce of guilt. It's not trying to prove anything, and that's the beauty of it. It's where you can go for that quintessentially French vacation but it's definitely not for the planner that needs to have your whole day packed. That, that's me. Colette, sit down. <laughs> so just let me paint you a picture. You have narrow cobblestone streets, ancient fountains that have been here longer than your entire family tree, and cafes that just spill out into the square. There's lavender in the air, and you're wearing sunglasses because the light here is too good to ignore. And you've probably already had half a bottle deep into some incredible rosé that is X in Provence. Sounds amazing, and I want to go back immediately. <laughs> now, we visited X at the end of August, not just as a vacation destination, but as a place to explore living for a year, and we loved it. We thought, oh, we could park our family here for a year and be very happy indulging in everything X. But alas, finding an apartment here is very tough, tough so we opted against it. But if we had to do it all over again, well, honestly, I might have chosen X. It's just that darn magical. But let's get into the travel guide now. Specifics. Yeah, honestly, if it was, if we had this apartment in X, oh, yeah. or actually when you start to shop, then you see like the houses with the pools and everything, they just look magical. 
But yeah, maybe if we had a scouting trip ahead of time. Yeah. Maybe we should organize like a group, rent one of those super sweet, like $3 million homes as the pool and everything. Romaru group trip? Yeah, to X. That'd be a great one. I would love that. <laughs> so one thing about Provence, this place is all about markets. There's a different one almost every single day, and they are overflowing with local produce, cheese, olives, bread, meat, cookies, anything you could want. What did we buy when we were at the market? The most American thing possible. A baguette filled with chorizo. Yeah, you did buy that. But we also bought truffles and uh, what else did we buy? I feel like we bought, oh, oh, figs, fruit, veggies, yum. So this is a place to get basically all your food, knickknacks, everything. And the best days for the markets are Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. So be sure to visit X on one of those days. But if even if you don't, don't worry. There are markets pretty much every single day. The market times are typically from 8.30 to 1. And we actually have a map linking all of those and we will put a link to that to downloadable map on google maps it's really sweet there's something special there i know they talk about these provence markets and and if you go to provence there they have different markets on different days you know like the Rousillon market will be on a monday and i'm making this up because i don't remember all the days and the the gourd market will be on a tuesday and the and you can just travel around to all these markets but i think it's amazing that x has three days of these markets so if you're traveling in the the provence area you have three opportunities to feast your heart out. And we haven't fully acclimated to the whole market life of France, but is, that is definitely a way to get your produce, meat, like all the staples. That's that's kind of a thing with like American life versus French life. Like American life is it's simple to go spend money and get what you need. You have a car, you go to Costco, you load up for months of food and your pantries and kitchen are filled. Here it's different because you got your your little tote bag, little trolley that you're carrying with you. And so it's more of an experience that is built into your daily, weekly routine. You're going to be going to the store multiple times, at least we have been, multiple times a week. You're not buying in bulk as much. You're buying really fresh ingredients. So I find that we go to the store multiple times a week. I mean, it seems like every day sometimes. Yes. <laughs> Uh, but if you are in X and you want to taste the region for yourself, we have a restaurant recommendation for you. It's called Luramus, Luramus. And this place doesn't mess around. It's not trying to be fancy. It's just trying to be good. You sit down, you order a bottle of wine, something from the region naturally. You're in Provence. And then you let the kitchen take care of you. But the foie gras here, yeah, it's probably some of the best you'll ever have. It's rich, it's decadent, but they balance it with something sweet, maybe figs, maybe something else, and it's suddenly perfect. And one bite in and you'll realize that, yeah, this is why you came to France. This is why you came to X. Now, the menu is written on a blackboard outside. It's all very French and very worth it. And plus, it's totally dog friendly. We brought our doggy, which is something you'll generally find all over France. Love that little slice of California and France because doggies are everywhere. And because I'm not trying to be a saint here, I'm going to give you another tip. Jazz night at Helios Libra. The spot is obnoxiously smooth. It's really something only the French could pull off. And for 32 euro, you can enjoy a jazz evening and a glass of champagne santé. So one thing we have to talk about when talking about X is saison. He is a historical artist, and this guy looms large over town. He was born here, lived here, and painted here. Mont Saint-Victor. Did I say that right? Victoire. Victoire. Saint-Victoire. Still practicing in French. <laughs> the mountain you'll see on the horizon while visiting here was his obsession. The guy painted it over and over again. He actually had, like, secret paths that he wouldn't tell people about. He'd sneak off at night to go get the perfect view. Now you can find those with certain tours if you really want to know where he went to paint. So he wasn't trying to capture the perfect scene. He was painting it because he knew it was basically impossible to really capture it. The light here is constantly shifting. The colors change with every passing hour. And you can never really pin it down. And that's kind of the point, the artistic pursuit of perfection, a virtuoso. <laughs> and I think Cezanne understood something about X that a lot of people miss. And this town isn't about seeing it all at once. It's not about checking off those boxes like you do when you go to Paris or Rome. It's about staying long enough to let it seep into your bones. Washing it down with wine helps. But it's, it's about not rushing, letting the day get away from you while you're eating, drinking, or just wandering around aimlessly. Yeah, like speaking a flaneur, of, right? That's the, the word the, the to, to wander. To wander without, without an agenda. 
There we go. Yeah. Very flinner. That's a French word. Yeah, speaking Flenner. of that rosé, I can't, I always, ooh, that was so good. How about the rosé in the fountain? Oh my gosh. Can we talk about that for a second? It was like. It was like the first thing that greeted us. Ugh. We walked, so X is known as the city of a thousand fountains. Spoiler alert, there are not a thousand fountains. I don't know how I got that name. Some good PR. But we walked, <laughs> we're coming from, with our bags in hand, and we're, we're coming in from the, the car park, and there's a fountain, and they have put a bucket with rosé just to keep it cool in the fountain. It was definitely a, a marketing campaign for the restaurant, but we loved it. I mean, it was such a, a beautiful sight to see. And there are plenty of r- w- wine stores and restaurants that you can get a great glass rosé. Oh, I love just sitting in the square. I mean, one of the best things, we were sitting in the square, and there's this huge fountain, I don't know, 50 feet away, and Colette and I are just sitting there enjoying a glass of wine, and Scotland would just run back and forth in the square and go, play in the fountain and come back. Ah, just such a magical moment. It really was. I think that perfectly encapsulates X. It's just, you have to slow down. You have to let the city take you. And it's also a college town, guys. So there's that eclectic, young, vibrant vibe. And it's intoxicating. So speaking of aimless wondering, if you have a sweet tooth, we've got one last stop for you. It's L'Atelier de Madeleine. Also... What's the other one that was that was closed at the time? Basically, if you come to France in August, or maybe don't, <laughs> if you want to go to specific restaurants, because the French take, as, as do all Europeans, they take a vacation, usually for the whole month of August, and that includes people that are going, uh, that have nice restaurants and all of that that you want to go to. They don't care. They want to go on their holiday. So oftentimes you'll find that they are closed. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. Madeleine's de Christophe is the other little sweet treats that you need to hit up. So either one of those is a great spot to get the Madeleine's. And that is something that you have to get while you're in X. These are these like, it's like a sponge cake, kind of. It's But there's just, it's so much better than that. It looks like a little shell, kind of. Like yeah. they put it in these uh, pans that have a shell-shaped depression. So it's this tiny, just like, uh, it's so light and delicate, but the, the ones that we had had this little crisp on the they outside. They were perfect. And you just get a bag of them. You get a bag of them. You can get you can get the filled ones. You can get the chocolate ones. You can get the raspberry ones. But we just love the original ones. And then you sit in front of a fountain as the birds jump into the little bird bath on top and just enjoy those every single morning. Oh, they were they were perfect. And it's how we preferred to start our days in X. I don't usually have sweet treats for breakfast. I know that is typically a, a French and Italian thing to do, but... We are, we're more of an egg family, <laughs> but in X, just to grab a bag of Madeleine and go to a, a fountain was, it was everything, honestly. It's like some of my most, the, the memories that stand out most in my mind. And I think another memory that stands out most in my mind that we didn't stay or didn't discuss was where we stayed. Now we booked this super last minute. So we stayed at an Airbnb. There was only a couple left that had air conditioning because you know we're american and want air conditioning and so we booked an airbnb in the center of town with what was it a five-story walk-up well they they say it's the fourth story but it's the fourth story european fifth story american yes so five-story walk-up with all of our our bags and our baby who well she took her time she liked to walk up yeah she liked to walk up it so it helped pace us and our breathing i feel like one time i came back from the grocery store carrying water and groceries and did the five flights by myself without Scotland pacing me. And I about a workout. Out. It was so hard. But if you go to X, there, check out Airbnb. That way you can stay right in the center of the city and, and do stay in the center of the city because there's, there's places on the outskirts that are super cute. But I think it's so special to be in this walking city, this place where you park your car and you don't need it all weekend long because it's so super walkable. It's amazing. And these, these mornings that we would have on our on our balcony, try to get an Airbnb oh. with the balcony. That light that comes in that Saison loves so much. Oh my goodness, it comes over that mountain and it's intoxicating. X is is, is for the the traveler, the explorer. It's a place, like we said, to Flanor, to to just explore without an agenda, to just enjoy the city for what it is and, and to be a part of it. There are a few cities out there where you can actually you participate in the art of the city you know like florence you can go see it and you can see the beauty and you can you know live 
in it. You can get an Airbnb, you can stay in a hotel, but you can walk through the streets and see the history and, and touch it and, and feel like someone who lived there hundreds of years ago. And X is kind of like that as well. You can walk around, you can stop at the shops, you can enjoy it. Obviously, you know, you, you see modern day life with all the tchotchke stores and whatnot, but there's still a lot of the classic historical stuff that's still there and you can just kind of breathe it all in. It's like walking through an open air museum and it's small enough that you can walk it all. And I think it's manageable because it's so much smaller than another city. And if you are going to go there, you can, of course, drive from the area. I think your your major airport is Nice from flying the, from the States. But it's a three-hour Tejave, the TGV train, uh, to Paris. Or if you're traveling within Europe, you can fly to Marseille, which is about a 30-minute drive from X. So there are options here. But I think I think driving is the way to go. Or the train. It's wonderful. So... If you're looking for lavender, rosé, art, history, great food, and just a beautiful city, and a good CrossFit. There is a really good There's CrossFit. There's a really good CrossFit. <laughs> oh, that was nice. Yeah. yeah. For those of you who don't CrossFit are probably like, oh, you guys just love it. But it was a way, It w- the reason why we, we bring that up is because it was during our journey of maybe living in X, and one of the quickest ways for us to meet locals and get into a community is through CrossFit. And so we went there aggressively pursuing people to see if, hey, can we be friends? And What's it like to live here? Tell me. (laughs) And actually, we did. We we made friends with some people. We did. They were really great. The gym owner was so great. What was the name of that gym? I'm going to look that up because that CrossFit, there are multiple CrossFits in X, which is also funny because it's not a very big city. Uh, CrossFit. CrossFit Gains, G-A-I-U-S. Gaius? Gaius? CrossFit Gaius, yeah. Wonderful spot. So Highly recommend. They also have other workouts like uh, yoga and some like postpartum stuff. And it's re- just really special gym, family run. But yeah, I think let's wrap up X because it was amazing. And next time we're going to talk about how we actually found a place in France. This arduous process had ups and downs, some big downs. Some big drama. I'm going to say there's some big drama next week. So tune Some like legally threatening drama. Yikes. (laughs) So we'll get into that next time. (laughs) All right. Au revoir. A bientôt. A bientôt. Thank you for listening to today's episode. If you're learning from and or enjoying this podcast, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Instagram and TikTok. These are great free ways to support this podcast. Also, please subscribe to this podcast on both Spotify and Apple. On both of those platforms, you can leave us up to a five-star review, which would help us out greatly. Please also check out the sponsors mentioned in today's episode. That's the best way to support this show. If you have any questions or topics you'd like us to cover, please put those in the comment sections in YouTube. And yes, we do read all the comments.